In match problem three, uh, we again want to find absolute maximum, or I'm sorry, find the absolute maximum value for each function on this interval from zero to infinity. So we'll again be trying to apply the second derivative test. If it were to fail, then we'd have to try the first derivative test. <clears throat> so the first thing we can do here is rewrite our function as 12 minus x minus 5x to the negative 1 which is then going to make it easier to find the first derivative, which will be negative 1 plus 5x to the negative second, which is the same thing as negative 1 plus 5 over x squared. Let me write that a little more clearly. Over x squared. So now we can add these two fractions together to get 5 minus x squared over x squared, and we can set that equal to 0. So setting this equal to 0, we'll get a 0 in the numerator whenever 5 minus x squared is equal to 0. So that means x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. And this function will be undefined. The derivative will be undefined whenever the denominator is equal to 0. So whenever x is equal to 0. So we have our three critical values. We need to find the second derivative of our function. So to find the second derivative, we'll look at this initial value we came up with for the first derivative. So that'll be 0 minus 10x to the negative third, or negative 10 over x cubed. So now we need to consider evaluating our second derivative at each of those critical values. So we'll evaluate it at the square root of 5, at negative square root of 5, and at 0. But again, this is a good time to check and see if there are any of these values that we can throw out. Since we're only considering this function on the interval from 0 to infinity, not including 0, we can throw out x equals 0. That's not going to be an absolute maximum because we're not defining our function at 0, or we're not looking at our function at 0. We can also throw out the second uh, x equals the negative square root of 5 because that's clearly outside our domain. So we only have one value that we need to consider, which is the second derivative of our function evaluated at the square root of 5, which will give us negative 10 over the square root of 5 to the third power. We don't even really need to figure out what that is exactly equal to. It's enough to know that this is a negative sign, which is going to make that a negative value. So since our second derivative is negative, that tells us that we have an absolute maximum. At f of square root of 5. Now we can look at doing exactly the same thing for part b. We'll start off by finding the first derivative, which will be 5 over x minus 1. Adding those two fractions together will give us 5 minus x over x. And then setting it equal to 0. That will be equal to 0 whenever x equals 5. And our function, our first derivative function will be undefined whenever x equals 0. So just like in part A, we can actually throw that value out because we're considering the open interval from 0 to infinity. So 0 is not part of the domain we're considering. So the only value we'll have to consider, the only critical value, is x equals 5. So we can find the second derivative to be negative 5x to the negative 2, or negative 5 over x squared. Evaluating the second derivative at 5 will give us negative 5 over 25, which is less than 0, which again classifies this as an absolute maximum at f of 5. 